Hey everyone, this is Jenny from Homestead Corner, and today we're vacuum sealing flour. Okay, so vacuum sealing flour is a little bit more difficult than tossing it in the bag and sucking the air out of it. Um, you, it's not hard, but there's a little bit more to it because if you just put it right into your vacuum seal bags and try to seal it, it will suck the flour into your hoses and clog up your machine. So you don't want to do that. So um, I have a couple of ways that I have done this and they all seem to have worked quite well. So I thought I'd share them with you. Um, right now, flour is not the easiest thing to find. It's starting to come back in stock in our stores um, here in my area, and they, but it's not always in stock. It's sometimes you can find it, and you better grab it when you see it or you won't have any. So I, I normally buy them in 20 pound bags anyway, like this one here, but um, I did for a little while, I had to pick up some little two pound bags because that's all I could get. All right, so to get started, um, the first way that I like to do this is you can just take a paper bag just one of these lunch sacks. You can buy a hundred of them for like a dollar at Walmart. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. You can get them all over the place. Just paper lunch sacks. These work perfect. So, um, so then all you're going to do is put your flour in your bag. Now you can measure out as much as you like. About 10 cups will fit in this bag is a good, it comes up to probably about here right about there for 10 cups of flour. So you can measure it out by the cup, which I'm gonna do right here and show you what 10 cups is gonna look like. John. And 10 cups. <clears throat> okay, so you're just gonna to wanna to square up your bag. I like to kinda of Drop it, let the air come out of there. You want to square up your bags a little bit. This way they're going to fit nicely into your vacuum seal bag. So you can refold the tops like they come when you get them. So they are flat. And then you just want to fold this over. You don't want, you don't want to roll this. You want to fold it over because when you're vacuum sealing it, you want to be able to get the air out of this bag still. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, I've got painter's tape. I usually use labels, but I don't have any handy. So I'm just going to take this painter's tape and I'm going to write that it's flour and it is June 2020 and there are 10 cups in here. So then I've got my bag, just to hold this label down, I'm going to stick this right on here and put it right on my bag. The air is still going to come out on the sides here, so we don't have to worry about that. And then we are going to slip this right into our vacuum seal bag. And it's, this bag is probably a little bit too big, but that's okay. Because we can just cut that off later. We can actually, when we get done, when we take this out. Back in the Depression, our grandmothers and great-grandmothers washed their tin foil and reused it when they could. You can do the same with these bags. If this bag is a little bit too big, it's okay. 
after you cut the seal, if you cut as close as you can to the seal, you're going to be able to reuse this bag. Just wash it really good so it's nice and clean. You could use a bleach solution just to make sure it's sterilized inside and then you can reuse this. Right now these are not the easiest things to find and um, and so we don't want to waste these. We have got hard times coming ahead. We're getting ready, we're getting prepared and learning some tips and tricks to save extra money are going to be really important. So once we have this, we have this in our bag. It's already pre-labeled. All we have to do is bring it over to our food saver and we are going to, I just tuck the little end right into the slot, close this up, and hit vac seal. And this is going to suck the air right out of this baby. All the air is sucked out so now the red light is on and it is heat sealing the top. Once that light goes off, we're done. We'll just pull this off. And when you, you can see the seal here, I think you can see this, the seal that it made, you could just cut this right as close as you can and reuse this plastic bag when you open this. But this will keep it for a very, very long time. Vacuum sealing will stop any weevils or bugs, larvae of any kind from hatching in your eggs, from hatching in your flour. And also, before I do this, when I get home from the store, this whole bag gets chucked right in the freezer for at least three days. That also helps kill anything that could possibly be in there because sometimes there's eggs and larvae or weevils or something in there and if you just make sure if you freeze this bag then it's not going to have that in there and then vacuum sealing it is double protection for it so this is super easy to do it this way and uh, you can do it by the cup if that's what you want to do I also will use a kitchen scale. Now I've got flour everywhere. And this is just a cheap $10 digital scale from Walmart. And I have this one already packed in. And this is just three pounds of flour. And we are just going to do the same thing. We're going to write, let's see, three pounds flour 620. So again, this is going to be our label. If you have other labels, they work great, but this works also. Mask and tape, painter's tape, whatever you have. Really, use what you got. Don't spend extra money. And again, we're just going to pack this down a little bit. And we're going to square this bag up the best we can. And this is just about the same amount. I think this is like nine or nine and a half cups so three pounds is just a little bit less than ten cups so then again you're labeled you're just gonna fold it down don't roll that because then it won't be able to get the air out of the bag itself and we'll just drop this right down in our bag and get it sealed up okay so another way that I have done this and this works really well as well is um, when you get these little packages of flour I don't normally buy them like this so I don't do this all the time but if I have a little package of flour I'm not going to take it out of this bag and waste the packaging it's this is the same as using one of these little bags 
it's doing the same thing. Um, you might want, I put a little tear over here, just a tiny one, so air can be sucked out. So that can really compress in this bag. And I'm also going to take, and I'm going to write the date right on here that I'm vacuum sealing this. So I know when I pull this out, this was done on June of 2020. And then you could take this bag. Again, I throw these right in the freezer. Three to four days, leave them in there, let them freeze, and then leave them at room temperature until they are completely um, warmed up to room temperature. You don't want to do this when they're frozen because it can cause condensation inside depending on where you're going to store this. So I always let it come back to room temperature before I put this in the bag. And um, so now that these have been frozen, I've got the date on it, I got a little tear for air, I'm going to stick this right in my vacuum seal bag. Just like that. And we're going to seal this bad boy up. Okay, so that is it. It really isn't hard. It's simple to do. This is going to make it last for a really long time. The bag helps block light, so you don't have to worry about that. When you square these bags up the best you can, these stack really, really nice in a Rubbermaid tote. Um, we have some heavy-duty Coleman Rubbermaid totes that I love to store our vacuum sealed flowers and rices and things like that and so when these are either the small bags um, or even these bags because this is actually so much cheaper to buy it like this because you get 20 pounds uh, for like seven dollars so it's really inexpensive and um, so that's why I normally buy bulk because it saves a ton of money and then you can package it up like this and when you need one cut it open Put it. I keep my flour on the counter in a half gallon jar because it's handy um, and you could just pour it right in there. You've got your flour and this stuff is perfect. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you join my family. And we will see you in the next video. Have a great day everyone.